Well, let's talk about how to write the query correctly the first time so that we take the hunting and pecking out of writing queries. I know that's how I started. It's, I think, how everybody starts. It's a fairly natural way to begin. You try it. Ah, oh, that's not right. You try it. You know, you just keep trying, and eventually you hope that it gets correct. Now, one of the main problems with this, obviously, is, you know, time and, and getting the right answers, but... Here's, the, here's a, an unseen problem by a lot of people. How do you know you got the right answer? Is it the result set? Is that what told you that? You're looking at it and you see, hey, there's the results that I wanted, that I expected, therefore the query must be right. I can tell you, and we're going to see many instances of times where the results came back correct, but the query was wrong. And that's going to become an important part of learning in chapter one, uh, chapter two here as well, is learning some of the negatives out there, some of the things that can cause coincidence. You see, coincidence is the bane of SQL programming. You don't want coincidence to bring you back the correct results for your query. <laughs> it happens. I promise you, you're going to see some examples of it. Right? So we don't want to have to hunt and peck. We want to know all this stuff before. So, of course, it would be nice to know what the right answer was before we even sat down to write our queries. And that's what thinking in SQL is all about. When you're given a problem, you can't, and a you know the database, then you can intuitively think what it should be. You don't need a, an editor, you don't need to try, you just know. You can just look at it and you know exactly what it is. So let's talk about some of the things that you have to bring to the table so that you can do that, so that you can start thinking in SQL. You've got to know the fundamentals. Like I said earlier, you know, I've never met a master who wasn't also a master of the fundamentals. You have to know the database structure of what you're working with. So, you know, I've dealt with tables, uh, databases that had over a thousand tables. You're not going to memorize all of them. Don't even bother. There's no point. But you do need to familiarize yourself with the tables that you are working with. Get yourself a database diagram, right? That's the easiest way to do that. Now, one of the problems that I see a lot of people struggling with is they don't actually have as firm of a grasp of what they're trying to do as they think they do. And so I thought I'd walk through a couple of examples. Now, for some of you, this may be a little bit basic. Well, that's okay. Skip the, the video if it gets too basic for you. But for those of you that are really at the beginner to beginner intermediate level, I think this it's only going to take us a few minutes here, but I think there's a couple of good examples that we can take a look at. Like, for example, I got an email like this. Scott, the report I need is to view the products with their suppliers. Okay, so I need to write a report that has the products and their suppliers. Do I have enough information? Have I, you know, the, the technical term would be user requirements. Have I gathered all of the user requirements? necessary for me to do my job. You see, most people would just say, okay, well, I'm going to go do that. I'll go create a report and get that information done. But I would argue that maybe there's a little bit of more information you need. And so I might write something back that says, hey, what do we do about this situation? What about products that don't have a supplier? Do you want those included? You know, that's a big thing right there. Do I want to include those particular products? Well, that changes it maybe, I'll just say, from an inner join to an outer join, for example. From a, a, we'll just leave it at that. We hadn't covered joins here. But that's a really important piece. So don't shy away from asking follow-up questions. Don't shy away from asking for a sample set of data. You know, I mean, Excel is great for this kind of mock-up stuff. Is this what you're looking for? You know, sending something like that back to Ann or to whoever and saying, is that what you're wanting? Perfect. Do it. it. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a real easy thing to do. Now, I find it helpful, or I found it helpful, to restate the problem. So this is just another kind of a tip to help you uh, be able to write the query before you get to the editor. So this was Ann's request, the problem statement, if you will. And then I rewrote it down at the bottom 
to be a little clearer to me. So I do this a lot, particularly when I get today, even today, after 15 years of nearly of writing SQL, when I get a very difficult problem, particularly in a database that I'm not familiar with, I'm going to do that. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to, and I'll show you this, how I do this so when we get to design patterns uh, in Chapter 7. And I'm going to write the problem statement. I'm going to write some pseudocode, which I'll talk to you here about in just a second. Huge help, this kind of stuff. I know it seems simple, and you're probably sitting there, yeah, he really did. I really do, and I think you'll, you'll benefit from restating the problem. Right? Now, another bit of info is learning to write what we call pseudocode. Right? This isn't a SQL statement per se. It's a mock-up of a SQL statement. And I'm showing, and I don't necessarily know which table and columns it is, but when I get that, let's say that Ann had sent me that email, and I haven't seen the database yet. I don't even know what it is. I could go ahead and kind of stub, if you will, the query by doing something like this, where I can write my logic. I can write the predicates in here, which are often one of the most complicated parts of a SQL query to figure out. And I can get that kind of stuff mentally mapped out so that once I figure out the database or once I have the structure, it's just copy and paste. You know, I copy and paste the table name into here. Copy and paste the columns that I wanted. Copy and paste the name of the primary key column. So pseudocode really will help you. And the more you do these things as you're starting out, the more natural they become. Now, today, I don't do these types of things for 99.9% .9 of the queries that I work on. I do them only for the ones where I legitimately am stuck. But mentally, I do that. I don't even think about it, but it, I've done it for so many years that I don't have to. But this is a great way to make this just natural. Because the more natural this becomes, the better you're able to write queries the first time. You've got to know that structure of the database, and then you've got to be able to do those things. Right? Now, speaking of knowing the database structure, let's take a look at database diagrams. So we're actually going to look at the database structure of the Learn at First Works databases so that the, you can have and print your own copies of these.